Hey folks, welcome back to ACRP Bonsai. I'm here with my Vivid Red Sagan, Japanese maple. This tree I got from Ed Clark, Round Valley Nursery in California, and it is just glowing. I do not think that the camera is doing it justice. This tree is absolutely brilliant. And it was even brighter just a few weeks ago. We'll zoom in a little bit closer to look at some of these inner leaves, but the tree is already starting to transition into that summer green color. And it is just beautiful to watch this transition. These reds fade to more of a pink and then they transition into this really interesting olive color. And then they're going to keep changing until they reach a nice hunter green color for the summertime. Uh, there will be more changes to come after that. We'll keep you posted as this tree develops and the variegation starts to show up uh, for the summer. So let me do a spin around so you can see where we're at. And although I'm trying to show you the whole tree, I'm pretty sure you're having a hard time seeing all the structures. So we're going to cut back some of those elongating shoots, and that's going to allow more strength to get focused onto the three thread grafts that we applied in early spring. All right, so let's get started here. Let's do a nice rotation around the tree so you can see the tree from all angles and it is growing amazingly. I'm sure the roots are already starting to spread out and escape over the top of that plywood board. This tree has responded phenomenally to the major root work and cutbacks we did in the early spring. It is off to a great start. All right, so let me get this tree turned around and I'm gonna turn it to roughly where we agreed the front of the tree would be when we finished our work last time. So here it is. And just for a little bit of awareness, here is one of the thread graphs right here, is this branch. Our second thread graft is this branch right here. And then our last thread graft is around the back side of the tree. Where is that at? It's so dense I can barely find it. Oh yes. It's coming out right over there. That's why I can't see it. It's on the front of the tree. You might be able to see the clay right here. This is the other thread graft here. So I've done very little to this tree between filming. Right here, if you can see this branch, I did actually pinch this back and I removed a few leaves in this area. I wanted to get a little bit more sun to this thread graft to make sure that it's growing strongly. Let me get a cup and then we'll start collecting some of these cuttings. And so I've got a cup of filtered water here, and I'm going to add a little bit of this Clonex rooting hormone to it. Just a little bit. There we go. Mix that up. Because this is such a beautiful cultivar, I do not want to waste any of these shoots. These leaves haven't quite finished hardening off, but I do believe that they are lignified enough that they could be successfully rooted. When we start this pruning process, it's really important that we are careful that we don't cut or damage our thread grafts. Remember, we want these to be growing as vigorously as possible so that they can begin healing that union where we drilled through the tree. We're going to be careful to avoid these and we're going to start pruning back some of these elongating shoots. All right, so this is one of the few branches that I wired. You remember this was that one we talked about. It was really long and we thought it might never be usable in the design, but because it was in its own space, we decided to leave it. This is gonna be a great little branch to help strengthen the tree, but we are gonna reduce that back to one leaf node of this spring growth. So there we go. Looks like we've only got one, two, three, and a little bud. We're gonna drop that into our glass of rooting hormone. All right, we're gonna to continue to do the same around here, collecting those shoots as we go. Skip that. And as we start to prune this tree back, we'll start to get a better understanding of the structure that we're working with. This was one of the stronger branches in the spring before it started growing. And so it's great to see that our thread graft is extending out even farther than that. This other branch here, this is that really interesting branch. It was a structural flaw, but we decided to keep it because of the visual interest that it had. We're gonna go ahead and shorten this one back as well. 
This other branch only extended one node, so that's okay. This one extended two. Because this branch was already longer than we wanted, we're not really worried about keeping a lot of strength, and we're gonna cut it all the way back to just one node of extension. That one there only extended one. These ones each extended only one. Oh, that one extended two. Let's pinch that back. I'm gonna move you guys in closer so that you can see a little bit closer for all of this pruning work that we're doing. Come on in. All right, so we're at the front of the tree and here's the second branch. And if we lift this up, you can see that this is where those interesting structurally flawed small branches were coming out of the, the crotch of our second trunk here. There's a nice little guy there. But anyway, let's, let's push this back and only allow one segment of growth for a new branch. So if I push this down, you can see this is where these have extended, so we're gonna cut these back. There's one. There's two. There's another one. Looks like there's a tiny little bit of powdery mildew on that leaf. I'm just gonna rub that off with a little bit of saliva. We'll keep an eye on it. Apply some neem or horticultural oil to that if we need to. This little branch did extend two nodes, but it only pushed one leaf from the first node. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. It's not pushed very hard, and it's filling in its own space here, so no need to push this back any further than necessary. Right here in the front, this is our thread graft. It's hard to see because the buds have pushed. Now remember, when we applied this thread graft, we made sure that we had a bud really close to that exit hole, and as you can see, although it's delicately growing, it has pushed. This is exactly what we wanted. This is going to be the future branch of our thread graft. This long extension we're using to build strength, but this is not gonna be part of the final design. This is gonna be cut back so that we can build that ramification close to the trunk. So as I said earlier, I already cut this one back before filming and I reduced it to just one leaf at the end. Now that we're looking closer in this area, I don't think we're gonna use this branch in the final design. I'm gonna leave the very end in here, just in case it produces more buds and I change my mind later. But as far as this branch extension is concerned, I'm gonna cut that right back. This little stub right here is going to allow us to have the potential for additional buds if we wanna add another branch there later. So we're gonna leave just that stub and we will keep an eye on that and decide what to do with it later. I'm gonna cut back this branch here. All right, this area is looking pretty good. And we do have a few more overhanging branches. You may not be able to tell on the camera angle. Let me turn this. But some of these upper branches are shading out our thread graft here. So we definitely need to push those back. All right, so we've got this upper branch here. We need to push that back to one on this side. And this is an extremely long extension here. Although it's only got the one leaf here, I am going to clip that all the way back. And cut that back. Look at that really interesting variegation we're already seeing on some of these leaves that were in the shaded area. That's really cool. We're going to push that back. This one on the bottom has extended multiple nodes, but you can see these first two are really close together. Nice small internodes, so I'm going to keep two on that one. This upper shoot, well, we do have a little bit of powdery mildew here. Can you guys see that? We're going to have to treat that. This tree grew so densely, and it has been quite humid, so that's causing a little bit of powdery mildew. Opening this tree up is going to help get a little more air circulation. When we worked on our sumo kiyohime, we cut everything back to about four nodes. Remember, that was a dwarf cultivar. This tree, although it doesn't have the largest leaves of a, any Japanese maple, it's not really a dwarf, and it's got a lot more vigor. So keeping four inner nodes would be way too much on this tree especially at this stage of development. So most of this tree, generally speaking, we're gonna cut back to just one node or two nodes in some weaker areas. And remember, this is just the initial pass on pruning. We're not making any final decisions. We can always come back in here and cut back further or even remove some of these branches if they're too strong. Right now, our overall goal is to build the strength of our root system and push energy into those thread grafts that we set up in the spring. This one is growing backwards toward the interior of the tree. Get that out of there. Oh my goodness, this branch is coming from all the way over on the other side of the tree. What a really dense growth here. 
All right, you can kind of start seeing the structure up under here as we print these back. And this is looking all right. You can see some of these are just so strong. It's a weak little bud, but I'm just gonna push it back. It's just too much. But I think it's time that we talk about the drama. There is a little bit, and I know I was not expecting bonsai drama. I didn't know it was even such a thing. But I found out there is bonsai drama. There are two different cultivars that are in the nursery trade and are both being called Sagan. This tree here shows an extremely vivid red in the springtime, whereas the other form of Sagan is more of a medium pink color. Uh, you'd say that that Sagan is somewhere between the color of Benici Dori would be a really light pink and then you'd have Deshojo or Shin Deshojo as the ultra red with the Sagan somewhere in the middle. This particular tree is even more red than my Shin Deshojo. So it's telling me that it is not the same as that other Sagan cultivar. Now, I don't know what's what, but what I do know is I have this very vivid red tree. And so I'm going to make sure that I continue to talk about it as the vivid red Sagan. And I'm going to stay out of the drama. I don't really care what the name of this tree is. I care more about the characteristics. And this tree is a beautiful red. It's the most vivid red in my entire garden. I've got Deshojo, Shin Deshojo, Benichi Dori, and none of them hold a candle to the red of this variety here. So I really love the tree, and I'm excited to continue developing it into a bonsai. This is that really cool branch that bent way down. Let me get these out of the way. We are going to reduce this back. It's the other side of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both of these back and we'll decide on what we keep. So on this little downward pointing branch, we've got one node going that way, and then we have two nodes going this way. And so right now it's definitely got an excessive amount of shoots, but we're gonna just leave it. It's in its own space down here, and it's not gonna extend anymore. We can make the decision later. All right, moving around to this branch, we have got a profusion of buds. Can you guys see how many shoots are coming out of this branch? It's quite amazing. I'm definitely going to remove this downward growing branch. We don't need that. On this end node here, we've got a profusion of buds. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove this downward growing branch like so. And then these upward growing branches. I'm going to leave two of these, but I'm going to reduce them both back. Get in here and see what we're working with. Okay, we have a few branches. It looks like this branch that's interesting. This is actually a side branch. It goes over here, and then these are going forward. So let's reduce this back. Reduce that back to one node. This is our thread graft, so we're going to protect that. But we do want to make sure we open up the area above it. So let's start trimming these back. Branches above the thread, we're definitely going to pinch all the way back to just one node. And I'm rechecking where my thread graft is every few seconds. I don't want to make a mistake when I get in here. You can really get carried away looking for branches. This little branch is coming from way down in here in the inside of a crotch. We are never going to use that. So I'm going to pull that out. So we're starting to open that all up a little bit more, create a little bit of room for ourselves. Let's remove that. Can you see how much stronger this thread graft is looking now in comparison to the rest of the tree? Here it is right out there. This is our other thread graft. This is our thread graft in the front. This is our thread graft in the back. These branches are not interfering because they're down below but we don't want them to get excessively strong and we are still are trying to push all that energy back into the thread graph. So we're gonna just reduce these back. And it's only two nodes, so only one to remove there. This branch is struggling to stay up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna push this back. We're gonna keep this one reduced down, nice and soft. So we've got our thread graft. We've got our second thread graft here. And here we are. I already trimmed these back a little bit a few days ago off camera, so we're just gonna recheck these. Trim back the stubs a little bit. So I've got two leaves here, 
and I'm going to select to remove the one that's over our thread graft, leaving one leaf on each of these shoots, weakening this branch and allowing more light to our thread graft. Go around a little bit here. That's looking great. Nice pad there. All right, we're going to continue circling around the tree. Here's another shoot coming from way down inside of there. I'm going to remove that bottom going shoot. All right, so in the crown of the tree, we know that this is naturally going to be the strongest. This is an upright growing tree, and we're going to reduce just about every one of these shoots. This one right here, look at that thing. It's already like three inches long. That is never going to be a usable branch. For now, we're going to leave it. We're going to reduce these all back, and then we're going to start making some decisions. At least this one had a short note at the top. Typically, these branches toward the top are going to have more energy pushed into them. And so they're going to be the best candidates for rooted cuttings. This is one of the strongest branches on the entire tree. All right, it's got a really nice long one. That is coming from the exact same node. We're going to pinch that off. Goodness, we've got like five branches all coming from the same node. We have this branch down here growing out of the bottom, but it's also got some other options up higher. And then this branch over here seems like it's in a great position. So for now, I'm going to reduce this. It's got a really long inner node. I don't think I can use it. We're going to remove that as well. We're still working on getting these all cut back to two nodes, but we're getting a little bit closer. Make sure those aren't our thread graphs. Bottom growing branch. We are reducing this canopy back quite a bit. Some of these branches on the interior here are fairly delicate, so they're going to be sensitive to the sun. It's going to be important that we move this tree into a shady location while we allow these to acclimate to being exposed to more light. I'm also checking these thread grafts to make sure we don't have any adventitious buds growing behind the graft. We want to make sure all that energy is directed out toward the tips. Okay, there's this little branch that's on the inside of a crotch. I'm going to get rid of that. That's pretty strong, but that is too long. We're gonna just make the decision to cut that back. This little branch right here is gonna be the new tip of this. I'm gonna get all the way down inside of here and see what's going on. The real dangerous ones are these buds that are competing with the branches that we want. You can kind of start seeing the shape a little bit better on this tree. That's really exciting. Yeah, there we go. Got a couple of these hiding down in there. These definitely have a lot more of that pink hue to them. Let's move back out so we can take a better look at this thing. So you can see that we've chopped this tree back pretty well. We've got most of the branches cut back to one node, except for our thread grafts. Here's one thread graft right here. It's growing pretty well. Now that we've got that energy pushed back, this should continue to extend. So that's really exciting. Let's rotate the tree around so you can see the others. There we go, and those are looking much stronger. Right here and right here, those are our two additional thread graphs. With that cutback, those are now much more prominent. They're coming out. Uh, they're gonna continue to extend and gain strength so that we can heal those wounds over and get that fusion process going. Now that we have this tree trimmed back, I hope that you're seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. I'm gonna continue to rotate this tree so that you can Look at what I'm looking at. Do you guys see this over here? That is just extending way too far out. And if we take a look inside, you can see that this is an extremely long internode right here. This is about probably over three inches. So we are going to cut this back. I think I had already planned this when we did our early spring work. I wanted to make sure that the next node down pushed shoots so that we'd have something to cut back to. So I am going to go ahead and remove this branch here. I've got my favorite pair of concave pruners. I'm losing about an inch of growth. 
so that it can slowly die back. And we'll come back in June and we'll trim that up. We want to reduce any chance of infection or water loss, so we are going to cover that up with a little bit of cut putty. There we go. All right, now what do you think about that? That is a much more attractive silhouette there. We've got these extensions here. Those have pushed really nicely. So we can cut those back as well. And that's just going to encourage compartmentalization down closer to that node. We will come back here in June and cut those clean down to the node line so that we can begin that healing process. But for now, we're going to leave a little bit of the nub. And we will cover those over with some cut putty. I think we are done staring at this as well. There's another one right here that needs to get cut back a little more. Putty that up. These ones aren't bugging me as much because they're hidden under the leaves. We're not going to do any defoliation on this tree. We want it to continue to gain strength through the summer. We want it to push that additional energy to the roots as well as to our three thread grafts here, here, and here. And this tree is doing phenomenal. I want to see if we're getting any callusing on this cut we did on the roots. That is beautiful. Let me zoom in. I want you to see that we are beginning to callus there. That's amazing just in a few weeks time. So if you look right here, you can see this light yellow edge right on this side. And that is the beginning of a callus forming. That is absolutely beautiful. So we're really excited about that, but we don't want to leave it exposed any longer than necessary. So I'm going to cover that right back up. And since that big one is callusing, we can rest assured that this rear one is also callusing. We're not going to uncover it. We're just going to leave it. We'll check it again midsummer and see how it's doing. All right, folks. Here we have it, our vivid red Sagan Japanese maple. That's just great. Gets back to our proposed front somewhere in there. I just love this tree. Let's go make some more.